Hey, a friend, Chris here from mylogicperrules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Well, it's been a little over a week now since the mega freaking blockbuster update of 10.8 of Logic Pro for Mac and the 1.1 update, the first ever update of Logic Pro for iPad. I gotta say, this might be my favorite update of all time. I mean, just the inclusion of Mastering Assistant, this plugin, this feature of Logic Pro that now will just master your track for you and allow you the option to fine tune the results. I love this new feature. I mean, mastering seemed to be a gap in the Logic Pro toolkit, in my opinion, where it's like, yeah, we have EQs and we have compressors and limiters and a multipressor and all these tools that may be typically used in the mastering process, but it all felt kind of like a workaround, a band aid solution. Mastering Assistant for me is like a slam dunk. I love it. Plus, the inclusion of Beat Breaker and Sample Alchemy now. In Logic Pro for Mac with 10.8, I love these new tools. And there's just been lots of quality of life updates as well. So I want to share with you 10 more reasons why I think 10.8 is worth taking a look at, maybe investing in, and just loving this update. So let's dig into it right now. 10.8 seems to have an increased emphasis on not just track types, but region types as well. Because especially with software instrument tracks and external MIDI tracks, you can load more than just one type of region onto those track types. So if we go to the new tracks dialog by clicking on the plus button right here, we can see that the new tracks dialog has been updated in 10.8. So again, the emphasis is not just on track type, in this case, software instrument track or external MIDI track, but also what kind of region do you want to load onto this track type? So we could choose to load either a MIDI region by default for a software instrument or external MIDI, or a pattern region, drummer regions, as well as obviously audio regions on audio track types. So I'm gonna load a MIDI region by default onto a software instrument track lane, which with quality of life update number one with 10.8, you can set a default region type for your software instrument and external MIDI track types, not just in the new tracks dialog, but in the track inspector after you've created your track. Also a quick number two, is under the instrument drop down now for software instrument track types. You can now load Drum Machine Designer right out of the gate. I think this is extremely helpful because prior to 10.8, you had to load any other software instrument track type or just an empty channel strip and then choose Drum Machine Designer from the library. All right, let's load our software instrument track. Cool, so there's Drum Machine Designer. We could drag samples right into it. I'm going to actually select a full kit here. All right, so we have the 808 Flex. But what I really want to bring your attention to is the track inspector here. Inside the inspector, so if we click on the I button, right here we have this option to set a default region type for our software instrument and external MIDI track types. Because of our initial selection in the new tracks dialog, MIDI regions are the default region that will be loaded. And if we open the editor with this track selected, because MIDI regions are the default, the piano roll is the editor that obviously opens by default, but check it out. We close the editor by pressing E on our Mac's keyboard and then select the default region to be pattern. And once again, open the editor. Now it's the step sequencer. And lastly, if we select drummer regions as the default, open the editor. Obviously we don't have any drummer regions quite yet and we need those to use this editor, but we can create a drummer region right at the playhead location. All right, look at that. I find this incredibly handy. So if we load perhaps three other software instrument track types, and I'll just load an instance of Alchemy. All right, so we can set instrument 24 here to MIDI, instrument 25 to pattern, and 26 to drummer. And if we now cycle through the different tracks using the up and down arrows, there's our step sequencer, there's our piano roll, and once again, the drummer editor. Number three quality of life update that came with 10.8 is that if you manually record enable a software instrument track type, the record enable button now blinks as it would with an audio track type. So if we record enable the audio one track, look at that. We now have this clear indication of what is primed for recording once we hit record. Additionally, if you have multiple software instrument track types record enabled, now if you hold option, and click on the record enable button, 
of a non-record enabled track. The software instrument track that we clicked on is record enabled, while the other three are record disabled. Just a handy way to quickly record enable the track that you want to record to while disabling the same track types that you don't want to record to. And just a heads up that prior to the 10.8 update, this behavior existed for audio track types. Again, if you have multiple audio tracks record enabled, and then you hold option and record enable a different audio track, the ones that were previously record enabled will be disabled. Number five, there's a couple of new default color types across Logic Pro. One thing to note is that instrument plugins now are green, just like MIDI plugins, which I think really makes a lot of sense. Now it's a lot clearer as to which plugins are instruments, which are MIDI effects, and which plugins are audio effects. Where previously pattern regions were the same type of yellow as drummer regions, pattern regions are now violet, as can be noted here in the Loops browser. Also, if you go up to Logic Pro, down to settings, and now what was once called the display settings is now the view settings. In the general tab right under displays, we now have the option to display MIDI data as either MIDI 1.0, or with finer resolution of MIDI 2.0, which includes decimal points or having it listed as a percentage. So let me demonstrate right now. If we convert our region here to MIDI and open the Piano Roll Editor, you can see that our notes are listed as they always have been. So right here, the velocity is 54. This is 127, 100. But if we now set the display MIDI data as a decimal point, you can now adjust with finer resolution or as a percentage. So check it out. If we open the list editor, we can see our notes selected right here with a value of 73%. And if I drag on it, we can drag to the tenth of a percent or a decimal point between zero and 127 of velocity value. Number seven is that the power button in the track headers, if you have the power button visible, so if we use option and T, you can introduce the power button to your track headers. The previous behavior of the power button was if you clicked on it, all it did was kind of mute the track. I mean, all of the plugins continued to run in the background, but the region on that track would be grayed out, which is kind of a weird behavior for an on-off switch, right? Then a behavior was introduced where if you hold option and click on the power button, this would actually turn off everything on the channel strip. Well, now with 10.8, you don't have to hold option anymore. You can just press on the power button and everything is now actually turned off in Logic Pro for that channel strip and track. Number eight in our quality of life list here of the 10.8 update is that 3D objects are now listed in the output field in Atmos projects. Number nine is the return of the notification that command and period can be used to eliminate a process currently in motion. So if I press command and period, I stop bouncing out this project because perhaps I remembered, hey, I got to change some detail of a plugin or automation or a track, or, you know, maybe I heard something that I don't like. Now, this key command of command and period has existed forever in Logic Pro to get out of any sort of procedure that's currently in motion. But for some reason, that notification that you could get out of that procedure, I don't know, it just disappeared at one moment. But now it's back. So now you could be fully aware that you can get out of bouncing, get out of anything in Logic Pro if it requires you to wait for a certain period of time. Also, a quick aside that the auto scroll to selection in the Logic Pro Mixer once again works. This stopped working for me for at least 10.7.9, probably a couple updates prior to that. But it was kind of annoying. You know, you would select a track in the tracks area, but then you have to go floating around in the mixer to try to locate that channel strip that you selected. No longer, though, auto scroll to selection once again works. Number 10, the last one in our quality of life list of why 10.8 rules. I think this is probably gonna be the reason why a lot of folks are gonna to wanna to update. And that is that plugin delay compensation for sidechain plugins finally works again. There's been a number of updates to plugin delay compensation in Logic Pro. 
And there's been some hits. There's been some misses. This is the hit that a lot of folks have been looking for. And I'm not going to walk you through all the steps, but there are some very clever folks over at the Gearspace forum for Logic Pro that had a very easy test for how to set up to see if plugin delay compensation was working for sidechain plugins. And so I've loaded it and I've loaded the same drum loop right here on both track types. They're being routed to bus one, to bus two and three. And finally, it works. So there you have it. The 10.8 update of Logic Pro for Mac is freaking banging. Aside from the major updates, there's been plenty of quality of life updates, and I think it's worth taking a look at. So I'll see you for more here next week on Wide Logic Pro Rules. Take care.